I heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Scout Fantasy Show. ScoutFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Scout Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. Roto, get out the insurance card. Get out the copay. The office is open, my friends. Let's take a look at Waiver Wire Wednesday. Let's get it started right now. All right, let's start with the quarterback position here. How about Sam Bradford? How about Sam Bradford? Now, you know, I, I, I'm going to just say this right now. You might be hearing this in name Sam Bradford the rest of this week because you know I love a good narrative. I do. I love a good narrative. And I think Sam Bradford has started to play very well in North Turner's offense. And if I'm the Vikings and I see Bradford playing the way he is, I'm not rushing Ted, Teddy Bridgewater back next year anytime soon. Like, Teddy, you know what? Just make sure you're feeling 100%. Dude. No, you're 98.9%. Get that extra 1.1% because we're pretty happy with Sam Bradford. I think with the bye weeks coming up, and his schedule coming up. And the fact that the Vikings are a good team. Bradford is in play. The problem is. Because the Vikings defense is so good. And because their team is playing at such a high level. His ceiling is low. The floor is high. But the ceiling is low. So you're never going to get Sam Bradford. With you know a 350, 350 yard game and three touchdowns. It's just not going to happen. 260 and 2 might happen. So he's a safe guy. I'd be looking at him this week if we need a quarterback. How about Alex Smith? People are going to look at Alex Smith's game last week and poo-poo it. Oh, he didn't do anything. He was 19 for 22. 19 for 22. So you know what? He did a lot. He did a lot. But the game flow. See, people forget game flow. And there's no article I can write on game flow. There's nothing I could do about game flow except explain it. Okay? Why is game flow so critical? If your team is winning 23 to 10 going into the fourth quarter, is there any chance that Alex Smith is throwing the football? Zero. Nada. None. Not happening. Because he's not a thrower of the football in the first place. So what happens is, is that he doesn't have to do as much. Now, if the team was down 23-10 going into the fourth quarter, he might have gone 34 for 42 and 300 yards and two touchdowns. Because there's a lot of fourth quarter garbage time in the NFL. Hello, Blake Bortles, Mr. King of Garbage. Blake Bortles' nickname should be Mr. Garbage. Because that's what he is. Mr. Garbage time. I'll just call, I'll just cut off the time and just call him Mr. Garbage. How about Brock Osweiler? He's pretty good. Pretty good the last week. Pretty good the last week. And you know what? Because he was so good, maybe he has a little more confidence. Maybe he has a little more confidence now. Look, I don't like him this week against Denver. In fact, I hate him this week against Denver. Hate. Hate. But. But. maybe I I like their second half schedule. They've got Jacksonville and Oakland and San Diego and Indianapolis and Jacksonville again. I like the matchups. I like Brock's matchups moving forward. So if he can figure out a way not to suck, I like him moving forward. Here's another one for you. Colin Kaepernick. Sadly, I think they're going to stay with Colin Kaepernick as their quarterback. Because you know you're not winning with Blaine Gabbard. See, you know you're not winning with Blaine Gabbard. And because you're not winning with him... You're going to reach out to Colin Kaepernick, who's not very good either, by the way. Not very good either. But he can run. He can throw. If he gets you 60 yards running, gets you 200 yards passing, gets you a touchdown, at the end of the day, you got a free five, six point from the running. It's like, a rush, it's like another touchdown. Nothing wrong with that. And if he gets a rushing touchdown, if he goes eight rushes for 60 yards and a touchdown, he just gave you 12 points, which is the same as what? Three, count them, three passing touchdowns. So there's some value there in Colin Kaepernick. Let's look at the running backs. First of all, 
Niall Davis. Niall Davis is the last man standing in Green Bay right now. Eddie Lacy hurt. James Starks hurt. John Crockett and Tubbs out. So basically, it's Niall Davis. It's a Niall Davis show. And I don't, I don't remember what they got for him at Kansas City, but good trade for, for the Packers. Good trade for the Packers. So you got to bid on him this week. Now, look, Eddie Lacy will be back, but what if it's four weeks? What if it's six weeks? You know, Niall Davis could, could earn himself a spot there because James Starks is going to be out for a little bit. I don't want to go crazy on Niall Davis, but I do want to pay for Niall Davis. But look, we are in week seven. How many better guys are we going to find on the waiver wire? Will I throw a couple of hundred on Niall Davis? Begrudgingly. Begrudgingly. You want to spend 300? Congratulations, you have him. I'm not going to do that. I'll be in the 100 to $200 range, somewhere in there. I don't know. 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, I don't know. Whatever it takes. That's where I'll be. How about the guy whose name I butcher every time? Jay Ajayi. 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 I think that's what I'm going to go with. I don't know. Maybe I'm not such a great expert. I don't know his name. I don't know. But I know one thing. I know he runs the football. And I know he runs it really well. And I know that he's a really talented player that I liked way back when he was at Boise State. And I said to myself, boy, is he good? Right? And now I'm wondering why Adam Gase didn't play him. Oh, he had a fumble. Who gives a crap, Adam Gase? A lot of guys get fumbles. A lot of guys get fumbles. But this guy can play. Aaron Foster, I don't need it. Ajayi, I need. If he's out there in your league, go get him. Chris Thompson, you know exactly who he is. You know who Chris Thompson is. He is what he is. He's a PPR guy. He's the Redskins' theoretic. He's the Jets' Bilal Powell. Who, by the way, I like too, Bilal Powell. But that's what you're getting. I'll give you another guy who I find very interesting. Andre Ellington. We are all one injury away from being done. Right? We're all one injury away. Sad, but it's true. I didn't mean to get deep on you in this podcast, but it's true. David Johnson gets injured. Andre Ellington looks pretty good. He can do the job. Don't tell me Kerwin Williams. And I don't know if they're bringing back Chris Johnson anytime soon, but I like Andre Ellington. And if I owned... David Johnson, I definitely bid on him. If I didn't own J- David Johnson, he might be a guy that if I could cut somebody because I had a second defense or a second kicker or something r- ridiculous like that, I'd put him out there and maybe, just maybe, David Johnson gets injured, boom, I've got a starter. I, I mean, I don't like to vulture things, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. At wide receiver. Tie one on this weekend with Ty Montgomery. Now, I know he plays Thursday night, so you might want to tie one on on Thursday. But with Eddie Lacy out and James Starks out, there is a very good chance that Ty Montgomery might be seeing the football as a running back. As a running back. Not just a receiver, as a running back. So I think he has value this week. I think also he has value because Devontae Adams is not very good. And Ty Montgomery is. And this is a guy who needs an opportunity because Aaron Rodgers is struggling. Aaron Rodgers is struggling right now. I'd like to blame the offensive line, but I can't. I'd like to blame the receivers, but I can't. I can only blame one person, Aaron Rodgers. And right now, Aaron Rodgers is a train wreck. He's a train wreck. Maybe Ty Montgomery is the guy who can get him to to, to do a little better job. I don't know. Maybe he feels more comfortable throwing a Ty Montgomery. I don't know. I'm willing to find out. I like Ty Montgomery this week. I will be in on the bidding. Kenny Britt. Now look. Never get in a land war in China. And never bid too heavily on a Rams receiver. They're not that good. I don't, I, in a million years, I dropped Kenny Britt in a league. I did. I dropped him last week in a league. I wouldn't have played him. And then I said to myself, I was upset. I'm like, you wouldn't have played him anyway. Truth is, I wouldn't have played him anyway. Playing a Rams receiver with Case Keenum, really? I mean, I just didn't like it. Didn't like the matchup. I didn't like it. So, would would I have been on him? Absolutely. Would I have been heavily on him? 
Not a chance. Kendall Wright, I think, is interesting. Right now, Marcus Mariota needs a receiver who he can go to. Tajai Sharp is a guy we should have known better. I knew better. I only took him in one league, but we should have known better. There was so much preseason hype on this guy, he could never have lived up to the hype. He's just not ready yet. He's a rookie. As my friend Lenny Melnick would say, a rookie is a rookie is a rookie. He's a rookie. All right? He's a rookie. Rookies do what rookies do. Rookies don't perform week in, week out like veterans do. Rookies don't run the right routes all the time. Rookies don't get open against the top cornerbacks. The Titans need Kendall Wright to be their top guy. And then you can have Rashard Matthews as a two, and you can have Tajai Sharp as a three. Then you're a better team. So if I can get investment on Kendall Wright, I will. Not high investment, not high at all. I don't want to overpay for him because he still has Mariota as a quarterback who's not that good. The running is good, but the quarterback's not that good. How about Brashad Perriman? Do you know when you can just see something and you say to yourself, this is close. This is close. I think it's going to happen soon. And then when it happens, you're like, ah, I knew that all along. Ah, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I feel that way about Brashad Perriman. He is really close to being a top-notch receiver. I'm not sure it's going to be this year. But it might be next year. And you might have a little Mike Wallace, Brashad Perriman. And I'd be pretty happy with that. I'd be okay with that. This year, though, he's going to be okay over the next few weeks because of the bye weeks. And you may really need him. You may need him in a pinch. So he's not a guy I want to rely on week in, week out. But in a pinch, I can use him. How about Marquise Lee? I've been talking about Marquise Lee for weeks now. Marquise Lee is the Andre Ellington of receivers. He is a talented guy who is one Allen injury away from being a good player. Whether it's Allen Robinson or Allen Hearns, I need an Allen to get hurt. And if an Allen gets hurt, Marquise Lee is going to be a very good pickup. Now, you might not have room for him, and I get that. I totally get that. But if you have room and you can stick him on your roster, I like it. I like it because if he can get out there and somebody gets hurt, you've got yourself a player, an impact player. And it's hard to find impact players right about now. I'll give you another guy. Who did I say was done all year? Vincent Jackson. You know I said it. Who was the only guy? I hated Vincent Jackson all year long. I said he was done. He looked slow. Sure enough, tears his ACL. He's out. Adam Humphreys is in. Adam Humphreys is a number two receiver. But he's really not a number two. He's really a slot guy. But they're going to use him as a second look. I don't know who their other guy is, to be quite honest with you. I I don't know. I I had liked Kenny Bell at some point. I guess it's Cecil Shorts or or Russell Shepard or somebody will pick him up. Somebody will pick one of these guys up. But I don't think he's that good. I'd much rather Adam Humphreys. I'm 100% more into Adam Humphreys than I'm into anybody else on that team. All right, at tight end, I've got three names for you. Now, I'm not going to give you the obvious names. You guys know the obvious names. If I have to tell you to pick up Tyler Eifert by now, come on. Seriously. If I have to tell you to pick up Dennis Pitta by now, come on. Seriously. But how about Jack Doyle? Jack Doyle, I'm not in love with Dwayne Allen. And Jack Doyle just seems to be in the right place at the right time. And he's with a good quarterback. So I don't love Jack Doyle, but I do think he has value. I do think he has value, especially in the PPR leagues. Five for 40, six for 50, eight to 10 points a week. That's not going to kill you. I'll give you two guys who are in the right place at the right time right now. First of all, Vernon Davis. You might want some VD this weekend. Now, in your life, you never said to yourself, I want VD. This weekend, you might want VD. If Jordan Reed is out again, if Jordan Reed is out again, VD goes up against a team that's really bad against a TE. The DET is so bad against a TE that you're going to want to start the VD. That's all I'm saying. 
And if you understood what I'm saying, thank you. Lastly, Larry Donnell. Larry Donnell is the New York Giants' preferred tight end. Don't tell me Will Ty. I'm not buying into Will Ty right now. Will Ty has made some bad catches and bad drops. Actually, not bad catches, bad drops recently. And Larry Donnell is a big dude who's good in the red zone, who just gets in the right place at the right time. And I think there's value for Larry Donnell. I do. So if you're down on Will Ty like I am, take a shot at Larry Donnell and you might be happy that you did. So let's expand this conversation just a little bit more. The conversation needs to be expanded because here we are in week seven. So we've got seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, seven more weeks. Seven more weeks. If you need a player, you might need to be aggressive. If you need a player, you might need to be aggressive. You're two and four. You're one and you know, you're one and five. You better go get. Niall Davis, you better get Ty Montgomery. We can't play around right now. We cannot play around right now. I'm going to have to do it. Just saying. Just throwing it out there. We might have to do it. Now, if I'm 5-1, and one, would I go and spend that much money? Maybe I would. If I didn't want anybody else to catch up to me, I might want to spend and say, I got this, this guy. Because you have to look and say... What player could be out there that would change my fantasy fortunes? Now, there's always a guy. There's always a guy. So I'll give you an example. Let me just say David Johnson gets hurt. I'm a God forbid. All right, God forbid. I'm knocking on every piece of wood I can find. Maybe Kerwin Williams emerges later in the season. It's possible. Maybe Larry Fitzgerald gets injured and J.J. Nelson is more interesting. Maybe Julio Jones Roto gets injured and I want Justin Hardy. I get it. But that's what we're looking at. That's what we're looking at at this point. We're looking at being predators, pouncing on a possible opportunity of an injury because most everybody else is taken. Who else out there is going to do something at this point that we haven't heard of? Seriously. I can't think of one. I'm going down the list. I'm looking here. Nobody, nobody. I would, uh, Deion Lewis, but hey, Deion Lewis. Right? Paul Perkins. Those guys might get jobs. Wendell Smallwood. Those guys might get jobs because the people in front of them stink. But outside of that, you need an injury. Matt Jones is solid. He's only getting in there. R. Kelly's only getting in there if Matt Jones gets hurt. So the fact that Montgomery and Davis are that good and they're available, you might have to pounce But I'm just telling you my strategy. If I have $728, I'm not spending $600. I'm not doing it. It's too soon for me. I just find a little bit, little bit, little bit. I might go $300, but I want to leave myself with a few hundred because I want to be able to get a guy later in the season. Now, not everybody believes in the same way I do. Not everybody attacks it the same way. I'm just telling you what I do. Okay? But I wish you the best of luck. And tomorrow, when we do our podcast, we'll take a look at it and see if it paid off. We'll look at the blind bidding results. If the blind bidding results are good, you know, we'll we'll, we'll delve in and see what's going on. But right now, it's time to put away the insurance cards, put away the copay. The office is closed, my friends. I want to encourage everybody to go to scoutfantasy.com. Enter the promo code ROTO. That's R-O-T-O. You pay for one month, you get two more for free. It's as simple as that. Pay for one month, you get two more for free. We have our, you get access to our scout scores. You get our access to all of our information for seasonal and DFS and DFS to help you win. We want you to win. And, and my friends, I'm just saying, come November 1st, we have a very big announcement at Scout. We're super excited. And I think it, I don't know if it changes the fantasy landscape, but it's a big signing for us. And we're excited. And I think this person is going to be, this is the signing is really going to be good for, our, for what we do. So I encourage you guys to stay tuned for, with Scout Fantasy Sports and see what happens come November 1, right?
Halloween comes, day after, boom, we're good to go. All right. I wish you guys a great day. Do well on the waiver wire. Make the right bids. Get involved. And be a member of the Scout Army. This is Dr. Roto saying be well. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Scout Fantasy Show. There's never been a better time to join the Scout Army. Visit ScoutFantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO for two months free. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time. Go Scouts!